Reaction number four. We're going to talk about how to reduce your ketones and your aldehydes with sodium borohydride. And what we're going to do is we're going to make, um, we're going to turn this carbonyl into an alcohol. So NaBH4, the important thing that's about it is it's a source of H, H, plus, H minus, okay? Not H plus, H plus is a proton. H minus is a hydride ion, and the hydride ion can serve as a nucleophile. So by now, you probably are going to be able to guess what's going on. Nucleophilic attack, push the electrons onto the oxygen, and then you're going to protonate that oxygen, and the resulting species is going to be an alcohol. So nothing too interesting about this reaction. Just a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, the aldehyde is going to be more reactive than the ketone. That's due to sterics. Uh, if you compare the H versus like whatever R group is there, the H is going to make this carbonyl more available for attack. Uh, number two thing to keep in mind is if you go from an sp2 carbon, such as with this ketone, uh, into an sp3 carbon, that can lower the torsional slash ring strain, especially when you're dealing with uh, ketones that are in the middle of a ring system. Okay, um, the thing is. 120 degrees is the angle for an sp2 109 degrees is the angle for an sp3 carbon and by converting an sp2 carbon to an sp3 carbon that can bring you closer to the angle of like let's say a cyclobutanone ring third thing nadph nadh these are also h minus sources uh, they're the biological equivalent of nabh4 all right, so there you have it, uh, NaBH4 or any source of H minus. That's how you convert a that's how you convert a carbonyl into an alcohol.